All right, guys. So this is gonna be the classic Selesnya fellow die retreat go play. So what we do is just lay this. All right. Now we lay this. So what we do here is we actually yeah, well, this turn we create this. But then it gets interesting. Is when we pop this. <laughs> when we pop this, we need to um, make sure we actually click the counter first and then the token. Did I do that right? Yeah, I did that right. Now we grow this to the proper size and we get in with these guys. All with vigilance, baby. You know what it is? Screw me. Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Zach. I uh, really do appreciate you being here as always. Um, this is Celestia Landfall. So, um, very good. Yeah, you know, Celestia Landfall, you've seen it before. If you clicked on the video, you're probably hoping to see something a little bit different. Um, we do run um, some cool inclusions and uh, we sort of, you know, we sort of steer away from the typical strategy. Um, and I think our win con is actually something very unique, right? Um, we actually sort of focus on growing our board and relying on heroic intervention. I say rely, but I mean like they're gonna do it. Doomscar is prevalent in the in the meta right now. Shadow of the Sky is still going on. Um, of course, right? We can still get exiled, right? Um, Extinction event is um, our worst enemy. You'll see that in the video. It hits us a couple times uh, from a couple different decks. Um, but this deck covers itself very well. Um, we do have Snakeskin Veil in here, giving some hex proof. We have Wilt taking out some artifact enchantment. And then, of course, you know, we run cool cards like Fall of the Imposter. So Fall of the Imposter is actually a green-white removal spell um, that, uh, you know, it applies counters. That's justifying the Conclave as well as the Luminarc Aspirant. Luminarc Aspirant is going to keep growing those counters, right? Bing, 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 bing. Uh, uh, Conclave, sorry, is going to basically double that. Um, and then when it dies, it gains some life, so that could be relevant. Um, meanwhile, Swar Swarm Shambler can be our mana sink, right? When we have extra mana, we can put that into our growing it by tapping it type of, uh, you know, holding up our mana situation. Um, of course, we can do a snake skin if they do try to, you know, get rid of us. But uh, those insect tokens can be great chunk blockers, like seriously. So uh, don't underestimate this ability. And then Solemn Singulacrum is just a great card, you know, getting that land into the battlefield and triggering stuff like our Felidar Retreats, which is a very essential card of this deck, uh, can be huge, right? Um, we're growing our creatures, things get out of hand, we have Aspirants sitting on the field, if they're untouched, they get us tremendous value over the course of the game, and then when they go to touch us, we just prevent that whole blowout play. They wipe all their creatures, we keep all of ours, and we win. It's very crazy. Cultivates in here, guys. We have three copies, some ramp. Um, very, very good. You definitely need this. You'll see that we do have an Atric Rewarden at the end. It's not like we're not all in on the landfall. We have Maja on here. He has a landfall trigger. It doesn't say landfall, but whenever a land enters the battlefield, you get a 1-1 one, one human warrior creature token. Getting those token, getting those chunk blockers going wide, right? We're growing a bunch of beetles, right? We're getting a bunch of insect tokens. Swarm Shambler is doing the same thing. Um, and then, yeah, really, we're just sort of waiting, or we get little one ones with this Battle of Breda card. You could up the copy of this as well. Um, if you, you know, if you opt to sort of go more of a token route, I sort of focus on the counters a little bit more. Um, and then Yasharn, we have two copies, also a great card, getting us two lands, a forest and a plains, um, can be very, very good. So, anyway, that's that. It also has an interesting clause players can't pay life or sacrifice non-land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities that can actually shut down some black decks um yeah very rarely but it definitely can bastard's lieutenant's an interesting inclusion um the protection of, from multicolor can be relevant from um, binding the old gods things like that but also adding an extra layer of board wipe protection so this sort of acts almost like a heroic intervention in the form of a creature because all of our creatures will come back as two twos maybe they don't want to board wipe us so as we grow and we continue to sort of just get bigger um, this guy adds a diversity of threat. Um, Doomscar, we do have one self-destruct button in case it gets too crazy. We can, if we do foretell this, right, we can cast this, cast Heroic Intervention, one-sided board wipe. Very, very good. You almost can make a deck focused on that interaction entirely. Run four of each and just sort of flood your board, wipe all of theirs, but keep yours alive for five mana. So that's essentially what it would cost for that play. And then, yeah, just the Ancient Green Warden. Elspeth is absolutely essential. Bringing back our one-ofs, right? Bringing back Maja once he gets wipes because he has a big target on his back. 
and then bringing back our Ancient Green Warden if we really need it, or bringing back our Solemn Singer Akram or our Yasharn, which have Enter the Battlefield triggers. So Enter uh, Elspeth is just very, very good in this deck. So um, I sort of mixed up the arrangement of the games today, but um, I want to, you know, I probably put a decent one at the beginning. So hopefully you check out all of them. There's even a loss in there. It was just a really, really good game. And um, there's about, I think there's four. Yeah, there's four games. So check them out. Um, let me go over the lands. We have four Temple of Plenties. This Bredegard Stronghold can actually be pretty cool. Put in counters and Vigilance and Lifelink. Um, even though it's sorcery speed for just basically tapping four manas in total is very good. And then, of course, run your Fable Passage so as to get the Landfall triggers. But yeah, definitely um, Felidar Retreat is essential. I think you should probably run four of this if you're going for sort of the strategy I was intending. Because uh, you'll see that Conclave, Luminarch sitting on the field, Bastery, everything. Our creatures will get up to like 8-8s, 9-9s, things like that and essentially win. So very, very strong. Um, anyway, thanks for being here. And uh, definitely give the video a like if you do enjoy it. Um, I'll be putting out some Strixhaven spoilers really soon, as well as some more Kaldheim gameplay. So thanks for being here, guys, and yeah, we'll see you soon. Hey, guys. All right, so this should be game number one, Selesnya Counters. You know what it is. Um, this is a slower hand, though. Not ideal, but we're going to take it. Um, we just have one Bastry's Lieutenant. Um, you could potentially run some more. Let me turn down my volume. I guess we'll keep that there, because we'll probably lay this tap next turn. Volume still too loud. So the um, the Swarm Shambler, we do run three, I think maybe I toned it down to three copies. Uh, initially I had four. Can be very strong. Getting that insect token, those trunk blockers, very crucial. So we'll lay that and we'll lay this. So even if, right, they shock this or something, you know, being that they laid red, that's pretty good. Um, we should be able to get something out of it. But he goes for a creature. Okay. There is our two drop. Normally, you know, we'd lay an Aspirin turn two. That would be perfect. But uh, let's do this. Hit him with this. And we are going to pass the turn. Now, what we could have done is we could have put a counter on the Aspirin. So as in case we try to remove it, we get the insect token. But I wanted to be greedy and grow the sh uh, Shambler larger by tapping it here. With its nice little ability at the end there. Okay, Gadrick. Very interesting. So we can blog. I don't think he realizes. <laughs> I don't think he. Yeah, that's a mistake. <laughs> okay. Or maybe he wanted that token desperately. Um, let's do this. Boom. Okay, so now we are completely covered. Um, he can block, right? Yeah, he can block. So he can't attack unless he has four more artifacts. Um, very cool card. I have actually a treasure deck I'm going to put out pr pretty soon here, I would say, guys. So stay tuned for that. And I uh, hope everyone's doing good today. So Bastry Lieutenant didn't cover it. Protection from Multicolor. Very interesting. Um, actually is more relevant than you might think. And whenever a creature dies, you get a 2-2 Knight with Vigilance. Ooh, that's a big dragon. So that's why we run Elspeth. I think we run three. Three's, I think, enough. I think we got the numbers correct um, with this deck. Of course, we don't have enough mana. So we cultivate. Balance it out. Doesn't really matter. Right, we're going to do this. Um, I think we need to grow this to a side. Yeah, that's what we're doing. You know, we could have swung with everybody, but, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know that this is getting scary, though. With the, gosh, Terror of the Peaks is overwhelming, right? So if he lays big dragons, he can just start doing damage to our face. And, um, we could race it if he turns them sideways. See if he tries to take out the Aspirant. Yeah, go for it. Wow, so yeah, it's only the target of a spell. I actually forgot for a moment. This is an ability. So Terror of the Peak's ability targeted the thing, so we don't get the insect. Okay. Alright. 
Um, the horn beetle here in hand, guys, can be very strong. So at the beginning of your end step, create a 1-1 one, one insect creature token for each counter we've put on our creatures this turn. Um, so pretty cool. Um, you can see when we have like a fellow to retreat out, it gets insane. Yeah, no, let's, let's, I kind of want to keep him alive. I kind of want to keep that guy alive. You know, I don't know if we'll get a better opportunity. We definitely might. Um, but I think we had the mana available. I think we go for it. And I think this is what we do. <laughs> I think we definitely get rid of that. <laughs> and he scoops. Okay. That was it. Uh, he only had two cards in hand. Um, and yeah, to remove those creatures, they'd uh, be facing insects and knights. So that was pretty cool. Um, of course, that's not really the main shell of the deck, though. So let's let's showcase some more in uh, a few more games. Okay, so game number two, guys. Uh, game number one was cool, but we didn't really get to show off the main framework of the deck. Um, see, here we have two Aspirants in hand. This is much better. We have a Cultivate and then a five drop to approach. With three mana, this is about perfect. Um, yeah, you know, you're not going to get much better than this. Um, assuming we get some good draws here. And uh, I really like just running like one Cultivate. You could probably run two um, and then they make maybe a Migration Path in the four drop slot. Migration Path is nice because you can cycle it in case you do have a lot of mana in hand. Sorry if my phone beeps. So, um, okay. This is always an interesting decision here. I think what you do... Huh. No. Yeah, let's lay the, let's lay the Conclave just in case they like, remove it or something. It's actually better than losing an Aspirin. Um, to make the decision on what to do, you know, if you swing with the Conclave after you lay it here, like if we lay the Aspirin, then put the counter, it'll grow to a 4 4. So that could take out the wall, and that's essentially what we're going to do here. So, Maja, Redegard Protector, guys. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you get a 1 1 human warrior creature token. So pretty cool, um, you know, you're going to be able to uh, sustain in the long matches against control. Things such as that. Okay, um, so yeah, he gave us the token by taking out the conclave. So that's kind of exactly what happens, or thought would happen, something along those lines. So as sad as this is... Is this what we do? It's not a very progressive play, um, board, board state wise. But that's what we do. Yeah, we can swing here. There's no reason not to. Getting that little chip damage for our free bird. Um, now we can just lay a planes, slap down Maja. You know, f its ability to get the 1 1 token can be relevant here, especially with a Fabled Passage in here. So. Um, in this longer controlly matchup that I'm sure we're gonna be in. So yeah. Drop this while he's tapped out. Okay. No swing. Made our bird a little bigger. Masha can be strong. It's just an anthem attached to a relatively okay creature that has a landfall trigger essentially. Um so I think for five mana he's actually worth it in the right deck, right? This is a, I hope the right deck for him. Looks good. Yeah, Sharn's powerful. Let's show off Yasharn, guys. Implaceable. You cannot move this guy. He can only move himself, baby. Um, that ramp just getting two lands in hand is, is pretty real. Attached to a 4-4. Very good rate. Oh, that's unfortunate. That Banishing Light. So we do run Wilt. I think we run two copies, hopefully. I could block that, but not. Let's go ahead and oh my god, can we actually triple aspirant here? <laughs> that could be hilarious. I think that's what we're gonna do. No, we're probably just gonna Yasharn and Aspirant. Yeah. I kinda wanna make the bird bigger than the owl. But this sets us up a little better, I would say. Start growing this bird. Yeah, we're not gonna block with it yet. Might as well swing. 
Okay, uh, definitely sad that our fire jaw get taken out by a banishing light, you know, but um, perhaps if we can draw into that wilt coming up here, I'm feeling it. What else do we have? Elspeth Conquers Death can take that out, right? Definitely probably worth it to get our five drop back. And we're not worried about that. We're, we're, not, we're going for the long haul. We know there's a control matchup here. So really what we want is we want to get like a scoop swarm now that we're at six mana. Um, we can start getting the better copies essentially. Sorry about that awkward movement. <laughs> Needed the move, man. Um. Okay. All right. That's very good. That is very good. Mm -hmm. So drop this. Drop this. Put a counter on everybody. Boom. Now in case they spot remove, we'll make insect tokens. Make the bird bigger. I probably should have made the asthma bigger than Swan. But yeah, that's what we do, and we play the patient game. <laughs> okay, so he's probably going to Elspeth the Felidar, which is fine. We're still getting value out of the Aspirin sitting there. I really like that these owls are now smaller, right? Because we need to keep our life to the where it is. Um, as we top deck for answers, we don't have much card draw, so these scryers can be crucial. Like right now, yeah, I guess we have to lay this. Okay, um, I think we're digging for either another Felidar, or, ooh, that can be good. That's actually worth keeping on top. Especially when we have three Aspirants that are gonna keep growing our stuff if they go to board wipe us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is get two four fours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're doing. So we could swing with the bird and force a block and force the board wipe if he has it, but I don't think we want to. I mean, I think we're getting the same... Yeah, that's what we're doing. It's less threatening, and we don't really want him to use the board wipe until we have heroic intervention, right? That's... that's. We're trying to, we're trying to get that into our hand real quick. Uh, let these aspirants do the job, right? The original name of this deck was going to be Indestructible something. So Brazen Borrower is targeting the bird. Yes, we're getting the thing. Okay, cool. That is sad that the bird goes bye-bye. <laughs> Can you use that wall yet? You should probably get rid of that wall. Okay. Take four, that's fine. Taking out an owl, that's totally fine. I like it, guys. Okay, so, of course, we just have a planes in hand. We're not in a great position if... Um, Doomscar comes down or Shadow of the Skies. We can at least draw a card with Yasharn being power for a greater. If it is Shatter. And we must not forget to give our Mushroom a counter. He's going to do that right now. Okay. Yeah. So two Aspirants hitting two counters a turn. Now we feel safe. He knows we have this planes, but we're just going to hold it in case we get a landfall trigger. Excuse me, oh my gosh, that was very sudden and weird. Um, I think that's what we do. Yeah. I like that. I'm cool with that. <laughs> um, These two... 4-4 four, four Swigger. Swinging in. So, yeah, this guy's taking his time. This is a little bit of a chess match of a, of a game here. Um, 
Looks like he wants, you know, if he had a board wipe, he would just block with the owl, right? But uh, again, we're just playing it super safe. Um, okay. Prison Borrower is good. It can't block, though. Only creatures with flying it can block. Alright, and he gets the owl back. Owl's gonna, of course, get him an enchantment or an artifact. Actually, a pretty good ability, this owl. It's not a bad card. Arcanist Owl. Top four cards. What's well, a four card dig? Artifact or enchantment. Well, nice little flyer deck he has going on. Let's see. Rogue, fairy, bird. Yeah, I don't know. Thought almost it was tribal or something. Perhaps somehow. Um, so that is getting rid of that. That doesn't really end me, but it doesn't like. Ooh. That is really hard. I still have the ability. And we can still keep tapping it. So I'm almost like, nah, we need to be like super careful, I think. I hope I don't regret that. I really hope I don't regret that, guys. <laughs> okay, so that's a mammoth. That's good. Let's just slap this down. Incentivize a counter. Nope. Okay. So, yeah. Let's put a counter here. And a counter here. E you'll see what I'm doing. Alright, let's... Let's full send on this aspirant. Yeah. He would have double blocked if I was just swing with one. Uh, I could keep it alive. Ah, I'm just being super defensive. I think we can use this aspirant to grow our other dudes here. This mammoth can drill it home for us, I think. Look at him swing. Okay, this might be the moment. All right, this might be the moment that we've been waiting for. <laughs> the board wipe, the moment we've been waiting for. <laughs> I mean, we were waiting the whole match for that, guys. Come on, heroic intervention, best card in the deck. I'm telling you. Sorry. No. <laughs> now we're trolling. Okay, all right, it's a draw. I respect that. Ooh, but let's get back. <laughs> let's get back this. Let's let's do this as we wait to get our third trigger there. Um, let's lay this plane. Let's get our token. Our two two that comes in because the anthem effect, baby. <laughs> that was really awesome. I did not expect him to have the counter, or I really just hoped he didn't. And um. Yeah, good play by him. We put all our resources into that play, came out even. I top deck an Elspeth though, that's uh, oof. that's nice, nice top deck. So a little bit of luck there, but uh, we'll take it. Okay, beautiful. I like Fall of the Imposter quite much. So for the first two parts of the Sega, you put a counter on up to one target creature. The last clause, exile a creature with the greatest power among creatures in opponent controls. So, takes out the biggest guy in opponent controls, exiles him. Very, very cool. Um, definitely check out this card, Follow the Imposter. I actually have a, a great video with a pretty good deck with this card. Um, yeah, yeah, go check that out. Alright, let's see what we can bring back. I think... I think we bring back Yasharn just cause, right? It's a 4-4. Four, four. Um, let's, let's do this. Let's continue doing this. Um, I am really scared of the board wipe, so is it necessary to, uh... I don't know, we'll let this for us. 
Is it necessary to like... No, it's not at all. Lay the screen warden. and look at us. Look at this huge board. Look at how big these guys get with the... You know, the counter from the Elspeth, the anthem from Maja. The counters from Fall of the Imposter, of course. Very nice. You sort of always can grow your creatures to the proper size. There's a Doomscar. I really hope he doesn't have another one. Because that would be bad. Alright, we slapped that down. <laughs> I guess we'll just lay a zombie mammoth. <laughs> um, don't have... Oh my gosh, I was going to say don't have another bench. You might... Oh gosh. Okay, we could... Well, we'll get something. Ooh, it's looking rough around the edges here in this uh, very uh, nail-biting match. Sorry, I need a need a sip. <laughs> I don't think I've ever sipped on camera before. Thank you for sharing that moment with me. Um. All right. Well, my goal now is to get all of the man out of my deck. Yeah, there was one more forest. I just spit everywhere. Um, let's just do that. We'll just lay the Fable Passage. Of course, we'll top deck the Felidor Retreat next turn. Let's go. But, uh, this Archon of Sun's Grace could end the game here. It could. Um, another Banishing Light. Okay. That is just perfect for them. Gosh. That is really good. A <laughs> Life Linking Flyer, and then he gets a Another Banishing Light, which triggers his Constellation, right? Gets his 2-2 uh, lifelink because of his ability. Alright, we need a really good top deck, Magic Gods. Lords of Chaos, baby. Don't think that does it. And we will hit him with a good game. And eh, we'll get out of here. <laughs> I don't know why I lagged. But, uh, you know what? That was a good enough game to probably throw in the video, so if we did, anyway, we'll get a couple more wins before the video ends. Let's check out some more stuff. What's up, guys? So here we are. Um, this should be the second game. I'm probably going to change the order, though, so maybe this is going to be the first game, if it's a good one. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is a good enough hand. Uh, we do like having our fellow at our retreat. I actually just upped it to three copies before I was running two, and it was too slow, um, or too infrequent. Um, let's go ahead and lead with this tap land, right? We can slap down an aspirant. Okay, start growing. Um, we have a scoot swarm. Um, this is also a card I might want to up one copy. I think we just have two. We have both here. Um, definitely can take over a game going wide. Um, then, of course, growing all these beetles with these counters, right? Very, very strong. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Luminarch aspirant, baby. Let's go. <laughs> So Scoot Swarm is is good. Um, that's definitely the strategy here. We just have three lands in the end. Um, we're gonna slap down a beetle, slap down the Felodars. We just got two Felodars. Cool. Yep. And now that we are three, we are a relevant size. Maybe we grow this beetle up to three, and then we have two three three swinging. Um, that could be good here. Definitely gonna be a big play in a, in a little bit here. Um, gosh, I don't even know if I should. Yeah, we slapped on the Felidar, and we just lay it. Okay. okay. I know what we're doing. I know what we're doing, folks. Hit him with this. Oops. Hit him with this. Now, we actually are going to grow this beetle. Oops, I did not mean to swing with the... Oh, he just... <laughs> when people do that, it's so funny. Like, I'm tapped out. Why would you let this one damage go? It was just a mistake. So we got one damage in for free. That's always nice. Kinyasan. That's his name. Don't worry now.
Okay. Well, so your classic uh, Teferi's tutelage, right? Every time he draws a card, um, we mill. Or we get milled. Sorry, I know that took me so long. This is going to be a big play. All right, guys. So this is going to be the classic Selesnia fellow die retreat people play. So what we do is just lay this. All right. Now we lay this. So what we do here is we actually... Yeah, well, this turn we create these. But then it gets interesting. Because when we pop this... <laughs> when we pop this, we need to um, make sure we actually click... The counter first, and then the token. Did I do that right? Yeah, I did that right. Now we grow this to the proper size, and we get in with these guys. Oh, with Vigilance, baby. You know what it is? Screw mill, man. Screw mill, man. <laughs> yeah, very good. So, of course, you can see the relevance of Her Heroic Intervention. We just have the win in the bag, unless we get wiped, right? Um, or Ugin. Ugin is our other uh, biggest threat in the meta right now. Um, there's ways around it. You know, you can build this deck to avoid it, and that's one of our other fears. There's the extinction event. Okay, so we have this Scoot Swarm. We have ways of protecting these beetles we're going to make and these cat tokens. Um, yeah, so we're still fine. We can recover very well from that. Definitely the power of Eldar Tree. Just recovering from board wipes. Giving our lands purpose, right? So, boom. Boom. Yeah. So, he's going to have to send one of his crabs. I would imagine he doesn't so if it's another extinction event we're gonna save up our mana right for this heroic intervention we uh i wonder what he's gonna do Just another extinction event, I guess. Okay. All right, Ken Jansen. Whoa, that's not gonna cut it, bud. That is not gonna cut the cake. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Try to keep milling us? We have 12 cards left. That's actually pretty scary. All right. If he laid uh, into the story, if he had enough mana for into the story, draws four cards. Boom. Got him. Too wide. Can't block all that. Um, then we could have potentially lost there by drawing four cards. He actually got us closer than I thought. So, um, Okay, we got a showcase going wide and felt our retreat and the beetle being super synergistic. Um, hopefully, I can showcase the whole shell coming together. Yo, so this is either the last or the first, but this is Selesnya, and this is a Selesnya Landfall uh, tokens go wide. Um, very well rounded. Um, we do feature a lot of removal, all that stuff. You know what it is. This could be the last game. I'm really bad with the order. I kind of want to put a decent, you know, healthy game that showcases the deck at the beginning. Um, when I can, often I'll forget. So. If you see like a somewhat decent game at the beginning, there could be some fabulous games right afterwards. Definitely stay and check that out if you're ever watching my videos. But uh, as of recently, I've had that thought. So maybe at least put um, the best game at the beginning. I'll try it. So, Aspirant, just great. You know, like, it's just immediate pressure. Alright. Uh, we do almost want mana sinks in this deck, where we have this extra mana later in the game, though. And say our aspirin and things get removed. Uh, we do need ways, maybe Crawling Barons. You could add two Crawling Barons to this deck. That would be very good. Scorching Dragonfire. So the Exile is actually rather annoying because of Elspeth. Um... Yeah, let's just lay the Shambler. I don't really like that play, right? We didn't really use our mana that well, but 
We at least want our target for two of our fall of the imposters, right? Um, we could just use Sharn next turn, perhaps. He might go to counter us here. In fact, I highly predict that. Since he did nothing, that's probably a saw it coming. Um, I think we just go ahead and get it out of his hand. I bet you it's a saw it coming. Or a cancel. Who's running that, though? Why would you run cancel? It's, I think it's strictly worse, right? Um, let's not attack. We'll use our ability. One mana. One mana and tap it. Put a counter. Very good. The mushroom's good. I'm telling you, man. Caesar lists as our opponent. Let's go. Taking his sweet little time. Let's see what he, what he names. Wow. Yeah, I don't think I put it in the video. Um, but we went against an elf deck. It was an elf deck with this card, and it got out of control. Every time an elf entered the battlefield, they got more, el more elves. It was just... It was crazy, really. Um, let's go ahead and just lay this. Definitely the best time to do that. We'll go ahead and just tap it now. That way we don't have to click through the uh, phases. And uh, we're in a nice position to Elspeth, a giant, right? They named Giant. So, probably wants to counter something here. So we'll lead with this, and then we'll follow with follow the imposter. And if he counters fall, that's fine. We're getting counters out of his hand, and then we can just hit the reflection with our Elspeth. Ooh, we got a free. Ooh. I probably could have put that on the yeah, Asharn. So that everybody had a counter in case they removed the Sharn. We at least, of course, get that insect. I keep mentioning that, but people forget how good that can be. Um, they want to remove the Sharn, and we say no. We want the damage off, and they have to do a whole another round of events to get rid of them, baby. Unless they have a wipe. Wipe would be bad. Wipes are bad, I swear. Board wipes. I am not a fan. You know, all things considered, I am not a board wipe guy. I try not to use them. They, uh, they're good. Okay, no counters, no instants. We're taking out everything on the field. We're getting in a very... He could have flashed something in. No, I was just saying how the instance. Unless he was really good and played, you know, played with the um, with the zone hold or whatever. He put a stop on it. Oh darn! I should have swung with everybody. <laughs> so yeah, Cyclone Summoner returns everything to our hands. Very very cool. Slay Elspeth. Sorry, bud. Go ahead and lay this is that, I guess. I don't know. Lay fall. We're getting closer to the third trigger with fall. It's basically like a delayed three mana removal spell if they do lay a giant here, which I presume they will, right? It's pretty obvious, so it's actually not a bad play. Okay, tectonic giant. Okay. Uh, submit zero. <laughs> yeah, let's put a counter on, on his creature, right? That's always good. Elspeth, baby. Get out of here. Okay, both of them are protected by counters. We're about to bring back, uh, nobody. <laughs> Forgot about the exile. Oh, it wasn't even exile. Oh, yeah, that guy was. Because of the Scorchy Dragonfire, right? Yeah, that's what it was. 
Oh no, it's frozen. Oh, it froze. Okay, and we exile the beanstalk. He didn't read it. He didn't read it, folks. They never read it. They never read it, folks. Never. It's not even possible. Who reads these days? You know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Didn't need to lay that. But, I thought I would just flex. You know what I mean? Feeling that way. Has to be a scoop. GG's. Alright. So that showcased um, the deck going wide and how powerful Elspeth could be. Yasharn ramping us. The Beetle then just... You know, when the Beetle came down, we didn't even get to show that off there. But, uh, yeah, anyway, um, this is either the last game. So we'll get into the wrap-up and thank you. Or um, let's continue. What's up, guys? Thanks for making it to the end. Really do appreciate you. Um, I am just sort of wanting to showcase the deck um, briefly. I know that some of you probably want a little bit longer gameplay videos. So hopefully that was satisfactory. Um, being that it was just one more game than normal. Yeah, you know, I threw a loss in there. Um, normally I kind of want to inspire these types of decks and give you framework to then tweak and, um, adjust to your play style. Um, you could definitely take out sort of the counter synergy, right? Maybe take out these fall of the imposters and put in three more battle of credit guards and go for more of a token strategy and, um, a stalling strategy where you're chunk blocking as you sort of wait for this last clause and then get more beetles, right? You can even run, um, you know, more cat tokens, right? Starnheim Unleashed is a good card to run, getting some Angel tokens on the battlefield. I have a great Selesnia array of decks, but uh, this one I just wanted to sort of showcase. I want to showcase Maja a little bit more um, in the future. I have a couple decks with him now, um, and then showcase the power of just anti-board wipes right now in the meta. So thanks for sticking it through. I'll put out some more videos shortly, and have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.